Hi, gay. Happy Pride Month. Yes, it is June. It is Pride Month. It is time for all of the gays to just be a little bit extra gay, and we love to see it. Now, normally I'm really bad at getting themed content out on time. This is why I never end up doing, like, Halloween videos or Christmas videos or, like, themed themed towards a sp specific date, mainly because I have the best ideas for these, like, months before the actual thing, so when the actual time of year comes around, I've completely forgotten them. And when it came to Pride Month and making a Pride-themed video, I was like, well, I can't think of a good idea, maybe I should just, you know, do what I've been doing recently with the, the ranking videos and the versus brackets and decide who is the best queer character in musical theatre, who is the best representation for the LGBTQ community. But then an idea clicked in my head, a bigger question, a question that I felt was more important to answer. And obviously I can do a versus bracket if you want it, just let me know, comment in the comments if you want a versus bracket, I'll do it. But the question was thus, with all of these queer characters in musical theatre falling under this umbrella, how would they celebrate this month? I know how I'm celebrating it. I'm sitting right down and filming this video for you. But how would these characters celebrate Pride Month? It felt like a question that needed an answer. And I am here to answer it today. So I have picked so many characters from musical theatre history. And I'm going to tell you how they are celebrating this special month. But if you haven't seen my face before, hi, I'm Ellie. I talk about theatre. I am the most chaotic theatre person on the internet. I do reviews. I do discussions, I do whatever this is. And if any of that sounds interesting to you, please consider hitting like and subscribe. It really helps me, it helps on the channel. Also, I'm trying to advertise it a bit more. Merch, there's Pride merch this month. You can get it. Description, link there, cool. Anyway, video. Now, this is gonna be a generally positive video, but I'm just gonna start it with this. Right now is a fairly scary time to be a part of the LGBTQ community. We are seeing more and more people trying to tear us down. We're seeing more and more laws being put into place that aim to take away more and more of our rights. It is getting harder and harder for us to be as bright as we would like to be with ourselves. So if you are enjoying this content, if you are supporting us during this month, I want to hit home the message just before I go into this really positive and cheery video that we need as much help as we can get at the moment. Speak out against these bills in America and laws over here in the UK and across the world where they are trying to diminish us. Allyship is a lot more than just accepting us. It is supporting us and helping us out when we need it most. And at this time, we need it most. So... We're going to dive in to these different characters. Let's start with May from Anne Juliet. And I think the thing about Anne Juliet is it's already so bright and colourful and they're also accepting of May that I think it's not only May who is going to be celebrating Pride Month. Everyone in Anne Juliet is going to be surrounding May and celebrating with them. I can imagine this little family of friends all going and getting excited to celebrate Pride. They'd be going to the parades. They'd be going to these events. I can picture Juliet helping them all get into like super glam. They are going to have the best outfits at Pride and you know it. <laughs> and I feel like that is such a thing that captures the vibe of Anne Juliet. They are, they are celebrating and they're being the most. They are all going to be the most. <laughs> Another character I feel like would celebrate by going to like parades and stuff would be maybe someone like Damien and Janice from Mean Girls. You know, these two are the perfect pairing of gay man and lesbian. This is a match made in heaven. I like to think that the movie nights that Damien and Janice do suddenly get even fruitier during Pride Month. <laughs> you know, they have like this long list of films that they'll save specifically for this month just for them to go through and watch. What are some fruity films they could watch? Why has Carol come to mind? If you haven't seen Carol, Carol is great. That would be, that would be Janice's pick. Damien would not pick that. <laughs> I feel like, you know, they go to like one parade maybe, but the rest of their Pride Month would be celebrated at home. You know, all they need to celebrate Pride is each other. And I think that's the, that's the beautiful thing about Damien and Janice's relationship. They just, they just like, 
propel each other up. They they are like so completed by each other's presence. It's it's glorious. We can also dive into some of the characters who I feel like would be performing at Pride. I mean, the obvious ones would be characters like Lola. Lola is going to put on a show. But I mean, is Pride Month really that big of a deal to Lola? Maybe not. I don't know. I feel like Lola is someone who carries their identity and carries their pride as a drag queen so strong that I don't think it matters whether it's June, July or August. They will be putting on a show for everyone and everyone will be watching. Someone who I think is going to carry Pride Month a little bit more with them is maybe someone like Jamie New. Jamie is new to drag and I feel like as he's kind of coming of age and finding himself in this new space, I feel like he's more open to kind of take it all on board, you know? Not only would Jamie be performing, oh, but he is there every single pride he can go to. Any local pride he can find and get to, he is going to. He is making the most of this month. He is making bank probably from these drag performances. And I think he's just enjoying it. You know, he's just, he's just having the most fun. Living his best life, as they say. Other characters who could be performing, I think of Rent, honestly. Obviously there's Angel, who is also a drag queen, fits into that drag queen plan. But also Maureen. I feel like Maureen would be putting on some protests. Maureen would be putting on her performance protests and she'd be having a grand old time. They would all become slightly more fruity, but even more nonsensical if that makes any sense. <laughs> Maureen and Angel from Rent would maybe team up. Maybe they would team up to put on their performances. I mean, they are already good friends. Joanne, though, the girlfriend of Maureen, would probably rather, you know, have a, have a quieter Pride Month. I feel like she's not gonna be one who is like massively up for going to many Pride events. Maybe she would like to more lean into the, the protesty things or like the marches and stuff, but, you know, I feel like she is very supportive. I mean, we see her trying to juggle in Rent this uh, performance protest. Even though she has no clue what she's doing, she's still trying to help a little bit. So would she rather be at home? Yes. But will Maureen drag her to every Pride event that she's going to be performing at? Also, yes. <laughs> a suggestion I saw that I found really funny was Clifford Bradshaw from Cabaret. Cliff is not a person who's going to be celebrating Pride very much. I mean, even in the musical, he still doesn't really seem like he really accepts his bisexuality that much. Of course, we learn through the events of Cabaret that he does find himself attracted to men. It's kind of more on the fence whether he actually does love Sally Bowles or not. Ironically, I feel like if they were to go to Pride, Sally Bowles would be way more into it than he is. <laughs> You know Sally Bowles would find it thoroughly interesting, would be asking a million on questions, would probably be performing as well, maybe. <laughs> Cliff, as someone who is a bit more shy, would probably rather be at home, maybe. You know, he he's still not fully open with himself. Even at the end of Cabaret, he's still not fully open. Of course, some of that is obviously part and parcel to, you know, the time period and the different locations he's been living in. But yes, as we all know, Sally would be a demon. <laughs> Sally would be a Demon at Pride. <laughs> We'd be loving every single second of it, and we love to see it. <laughs> Poppy and Nikki from Standing at the Sky's Edge, I found so cute. Ooh, okay. I feel like they would prefer a quieter Pride month. You know, they they would be celebrating at home. You know, maybe maybe with a nice glass of wine, they would be celebrating. They're still kind of in the process of rekindling that relationship, and you know, maybe they'll go to like one event. Maybe they'll just, you know, watch the the parade as it goes down. I feel like they, they'll enjoy a quieter Pride Month than some of the other characters on this list. Do you know who isn't celebrating a quiet Pride Month though? Enid Hoops from Legally Blonde. Oh, she is fighting. She doesn't need Pride Month to tell her to go on protest for the rights of gay people, for trans people, for every single section of the LGBTQ community, and probably causes beyond that. If you have seen anyone who is a fighter, it is Enid Hoops. She is the first person to remind you that Pride is a protest and the strong messages behind that. 
And she is probably organizing all of these events. She is the one who's setting everything up. She has got, she's got the protest, she's got the parade, she's got everything going and being set up right now to champion Pride Month. Elder McKinley falls into the Clifford Bradshaw section of this video. Elder McKinley from Book of Mormon, still at the end of the show, isn't that open about his sexuality. He's very repressed. Uh, he, he's a repressed little, little fruit and you know, that's fine. When he opens himself up a bit more, maybe he will be a lot more open to celebrating Pride Month. He's got a journey to go through. He's got to, you know, find himself. He's got to realize these things. He's got to open himself up to being honest about himself. And maybe then he'll join in a little bit with the Pride Month festivities. <laughs> Frankenfurter does not know what Pride is. <laughs> this is an alien? Man has not heard of Pride. <laughs> of course, with the creation of Rocky Horror Picture Show and the show Rocky Horror Show without the picture, there is a lot of iconography used with the creation of these characters that link very heavily to the LGBTQ community, mainly thanks to Richard O'Brien, who is indeed a bit fruity. <laughs> but Frank and Verda, you know, it's, it's hard to lump in into that community when, you know, he's an alien who probably does not know this. How long has he lived on Earth? We still don't really know. You know, he may be making a man with blonde hair and a tan, and you know, they, I feel like they would probably enjoy Pride Month. They probably just walk down the street in their normal outfits and people would just think they're going to a Pride event anyway. They probably accidentally find themselves at one. <laughs> but I don't think they're purposely celebrating. <laughs> Do you know who is celebrating though? Harold Ziedler. Ziedler has decked out the Moulin Rouge. You know how Moulin Rouge in London decorates itself every pride and changes the, the banner underneath on the marquee to say like, love is love. I feel like this is just canonically what Ziedler does to the Moulin Rouge during Pride Month. Ziedler loves to put on a show and he does it because he can, can, can. <laughs> But I mean, would much change other than like maybe some decorations in the Moulin Rouge? Maybe, maybe he'll, he'll celebrate Pride Month by changing some of his monologues. I don't know, I feel like the Moulin Rouge's music catalog is already so fruity that they don't need to do much to it. <laughs> they can, can, can leave it as is because it is, is, is fruity as all hell. But yeah, I feel like Ziedler would love Pride Month. Ziedler, Ziedler loves any opportunity to, to be even flashier and camp than he already is. Kurt and Ram's dads from Heathers is a really interesting suggestion that came from Instagram. I would not have thought of to add them to this, but you know, these are two people who have spent their whole lives kind of repressing their identities. They had one beautiful fishing trip that summer but it took them a while, it took them a fairly tragic event to be open with themselves. And I feel like they're still getting used to that. I feel like there's still a lot to unlearn. And once they've done that, you know those queer adults, like the older queer people who go in and be like, if, if your parents don't accept you, I'm, I am your parent now, with like the free hug sign. I feel like that would be Kurt and Ram's dad. <laughs> you know, like, we are dads now, we will accept you, you know, we've gone, we understand it, we've gone on this long journey to accept ourselves as well, it's hard. I feel like that's them. I feel like out of everyone on this list, because a lot of these are like younger, younger people as well, I feel like out of all of these guys, they're, they're, they're the gay dads. Which is very fitting, <laughs> seeing as they are gay dads. <laughs> Emma and Alyssa. Oh, that is an interesting one. They're obviously from a town where it's not overly accepting to be queer. And I feel like once the promise happened, they, they'll move out of that town and they'll be so much more open and free with themselves. I feel like they, they're celebrating pride. They are celebrating pride to a T. They're going above and beyond and they're really opening themselves up to it because they haven't been able to experience that before. Coming from the town they live in, coming from families who may not fully accept them, they've they've had to repress a lot. They've had to hide a lot. And now that they're able to be open and free, I feel like they're taking full advantage of it. You know, they are they're going to these events. They're they're getting fully dressed up, I feel. I can picture them doing each other's makeup. You know, like adding little pride flags onto their faces, painting it. Oh, that would be so cute. They've had the big celebration 
at their prom with the big explosion of queer energy and they don't want to give that up. This month that is fully there to celebrate them and their identity and all the things that they love about themselves now, it's there, it's ready. And I feel like, you know, they're gonna throw themselves into the deep end immediately. Marvin and Wizard. Ooh, that is a good one. Of course, Act 1 Marvin and Wizard from Falsettos would probably be a, a little bit less willing to go to pride events you know maybe there'd be the couple who like plan to go but on the way they have a massive falling out and an argument and they end up going but they're going separately and then by the end of the pride event they're back together again you know <laughs> it's a whole ordeal with marvin and wizard from their version in act one then act two marvin and wizard depends on which part because man that musical gets sad Oh boy. <laughs> I feel like when they're, they've come back together, when they've both grown a little bit more, when they're feeling more secure about themselves and their relationship, and they're like, you know, you know that bit in uh, A Day in Falsetto Land where they're playing tennis? Like, I feel like that is like the peak of their relationship. That's when they're like at their best, when they're, they're feeling open with each other, when they're feeling secure with each other. That is the the two of them where I feel like they go to Pride and they'd be able to fully celebrate it properly. No arguments, no falling out, just a celebration of them and everyone else who is allowed to be open and free with themselves. And if we want to get sad for a moment, I feel like they would even be celebrating as Wizard gets sick. Because of the messaging of Falsettos about fan family and the extension of family, I feel like they would all celebrate that a little bit more. All coming together to celebrate one another. I feel like that is the joy of that tight-knit family that they create as you go through falsettos. But man, this one feels really sad knowing the ending of falsettos. <laughs> George's and Albin from Lacage, well obviously Albin would be performing. Albin would be performing. Lacage at Falls is already the fruitiest place on earth. They don't need to do anything additional to it to make it perfect for Pride Month. Albin would probably choose some special numbers to do. Again, like Falsettos, there's a very tight family that is made between these two and George's son and of course George's son's girlfriend. I feel like they would all be celebrating together perfectly as a family. It's hard to imagine Lacage becoming even fruitier. I feel like they would probably achieve it. They would be hosting the Pride events. They would be running them. They would be making sure that it is perfect. They're having the most fun. Rod from Avenue Q. This is another character who spends most of the musical being, you know, a little bit quieter with their sexuality. They're not quite ready to come out yet. They've got a crush on their straight roommate. But, you know, he's he's someone who, by the end of the show, really feels open and happy with himself. What's the name of his boyfriend? Is, Rick, is it Ricky at the end? <laughs> oh yeah, they, they are celebrating Pride. They are there. They are on the front lines. Avenue Q is probably home to a couple of Pride events as well. You know, Pride flags in the windows and a couple of little things here and there. They'd be having fun. Russell from Bake Off is one that you guys suggested I would have never thought of, but I love it. Russell is a little bit of a celebrity at the end of the Bake Off musical. You know, people, people love his Instagram, the Queen of tarts. I feel like he's, he's one. He's changed his profile picture to include a uh, LGBTQ flag. You know, he is, he's posting a little bit more. You know, he is an older gay as well. Maybe he would be another one who would be like, I am your dad now. But you know, I, I feel like Russell is a very humble man. He's just sweet. He's that sweet older gay who's probably like just happy to see the younger generations of queer people being able to celebrate and be loud and proud about who they are. He's probably got many people in his DMs calling him a queer icon and he probably agrees with them, honestly. <laughs> so is he celebrating the most? Maybe not. He'll probably do a couple of things here and there. He'll probably get invited. Maybe you get invited to a pride. And maybe he'd, he'd do some baking for it, I don't know. <laughs> Actually, maybe that's what he does. Maybe he does like a little charity bake sale. I feel like, you know, like the, the coffee mornings that they do? He would host like a mini coffee morning. 
he'll bake a bunch of cakes, he'll do a bunch of things, and he'll raise a little bit of money for, for like, a queer charity. I feel like that's that's something Russell would do to celebrate Pride. He doesn't he doesn't need to go to these big events. He doesn't need to do that. All he needs to do is, you know, bring his friends around, may, you know, raise a little bit of money for charity and, and donate that. Now, obviously, some of these characters are from time periods where, you know, they can't really celebrate Pride. I mean, some of them I've looked over, like Cliff and Sally, like 1920s Berlin isn't really going to have like a massive Pride Month thing. I feel like as we're going later into the centuries, I feel like it, it is even harder. I mean, someone like Han Chin and Ernst, you know, they're not going to really be able to celebrate a Pride Month per se. Annie and Martha, even though that relationship is a little bit more um, subtext than the actual representation in the musical, I feel like Ride softly gives you some of those clues that maybe these two are a little bit, you know? Both of those musicals are set in the 1800s. <laughs> so, you know, they're not celebrating a Pride Month per se, but I feel like they're celebrating each other. And that's beautiful as well. There's also some queer characters who are like one-to-one -one based on real people. I mean, Jamie New is someone who is based on a real person, but that musical takes enough creative liberties to separate the show from the person. But something like Come From Away, where you have the Kevins. I feel like I can't really sit here and say, this is what they do, because they could very easily watch this video and just go, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> So if you want to know how the Kevins from Come From Away are celebrating Pride Month, go look up their social medias, I guess. <laughs> I'm trying to think of any other queer characters from musicals I've forgotten. There's going to be so many. There's going to be so many people in the comments. I mean, if I miss a character and you want me to tell you how I think they would celebrate Pride, or you can say how you think they would celebrate Pride, let me know in the comments and I'll answer them there. Oh, do you know who would absolutely love a Pride Month? Hedwig. Oh, Hedwig. Hedwig is performing. <laughs> Hedwig is putting on some, like, beautiful Rocky shows during Pride Month. She is performing. She is loving every second. Oh, it would be amazing. I also actually like the idea of Hedwig going and supporting Yitzhak performing as well. I feel like, especially with the ending of that musical, platforming Yitzhak a bit more, I feel like Hedwig is probably someone maybe less likely to perform now and more likely to just be there supporting Yitzhak. Oh, I actually like the idea more. I like the idea more. And there we go. Those are a bunch of characters and how I think they would celebrate Pride Month. Are there any ideas that you have that I haven't really explored? Any characters that I haven't spoken about? Let me know in the comments down below and happy Pride Month to all of you. If you did enjoy this video, please consider hitting like and subscribe. It really helps me, it helps out the channel. Here's some links to some other videos on screen right now and a link to my Instagram if you want to drop me a follow over there. But that's it for me today and I hope to see you next time. Bye.